Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at payroll taxes and specifically we're going to be looking at four W4 which is the employee withholding certificate. Now if you are in the US you should be familiar with the form W4. Simply put every time you get a job you have to fill out a form W4 so you tell your employer your company that you work for how much they will need to take from your paycheck in form of taxes. In the US what happened is this as you work you pay your taxes. It's pay as you go system. So what happens is if you don't pay enough, you will be penalized at the end of the year and you might, you owe money and you might be penalized. If you pay too much over what you need to do, then you'll get a refund. However, understanding the W4 will minimize underpaying or overpaying. So you really don't want to underpay because you might be subject to a penalty, but also you don't want to overpay because then the you're giving your money to the government, which you can use now. So in this session, we'll go over the W-4 and how does it work. Now, before we start, I would like to remind you that if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, to strongly check out my website, farhatlectures.com. If you are a CPA candidate, I don't replace your CPA review course. I can be a supplement to your CPA review course. And by, by doing so, I can help you improve your grade. I do have resources for other accounting courses. If you're an accounting student or CPA candidate, check out the CPA exam score for your college. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And check out my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at W-4. So let's have a macro look at this form because we're going to use it later. So the W-4 basically has one, two, three, four, five parts. Let's take it part by part. They call it step one, step two. The old form, they used to call it parts. I'm still used to the old form. So part one, it's basically your information, name, last first name, last name, social security address. And this is important here. What is your tax filing status? Is it single or married filing? separately, married filing jointly, or qualify widow or widower, or head of a household. So this is your filing status. You have to check one box. Complete, uh, well, let's take a look at the over, over form. Form two, if you have multiple jobs or your spouse works. So when do you get into this step two? Well, if you have more than one job, for example, I always held more than one job. If that's the case, you have to look at this, uh, examine this step, and we'll look at this step later. Part three is your dependents. If you have any dependents, for example, if you have children for each child, you'll have 2000 And if you have other dependent, you will get $500 for each dependent. Uh, part four is other, is other adjustments. If you, if you have other income, what could be other income? For example, you might have money in the bank that earns interest. You might have stocks that gives you a dividend. You might have retirement income. You might have income from other sources, and as a result, you want to let your employer know. Therefore, they, and why do you want to let them know? That, that's the reason. You want to let them know because you want them to withheld money from your paycheck. Okay. Otherwise, if you if you're earning interest, the bank will not take the money, will not pay, will not take taxes unless you don't have your W eight. But that's a different story. Same thing with dividend. Deductions, if you if you expect to claim deductions other than the standard deduction and want to reduce your withholding, then you will use the deduction worksheet, which we'll look at this shortly. That's not that important. We don't worry about this. And for any reason you want to have extra withholding, you want you want your employer to take an additional $200 per check, you will have this on 4C. Why would you do so? Because you might have other income and because of that, you want to pay the taxes from what you are doing as a job. And obviously, part five is pretty easy. You sign, you date, and that's that. Okay. And those are the five parts. So let's go through each one of them separately. So when do you complete part two or step two? You hold more than one job or you are married and your spouse is working. So you have two jobs. Here's what you have to do is you have to do only one of the following. Under those circumstances, the amount of the withholding depend on the income earned from these jobs. Obviously, the more you make, the more you're supposed to pay. You could use the IRS estimator. I'm not going to look at the IRS estimator, but you can look at it if you want to. You, so you, you could use this method to determine how much they should pay from your paycheck. Or you could use the multiple jobs worksheet, which is page three of this form, and would look at page three of this form because you are learning how to do this as a college students. 
Or what you can do, you can simply check this box, which is three. You will do one of those. And what does that mean? C, it means let's assume you're making eighty thousand dollars. You're telling also you're telling your employer, my spouse also makes eighty thousand dollars. If you have two jobs, one is forty, you and you check this box, it means you have another job that you're also making forty thousand. That's what it is. So tell your employer how much you are making in total. Therefore, they will adjust. They will adjust separately. So this is again step two. If you have multiple jobs, if you don't have a multiple jobs, you just claim you're dependent. And uh, if you want, again, this is optional ex extra. Okay, again, um, w w as we go further, I'm going to be referring to box 4C, box 4B, box 4A. So th those are optional. Here, uh, box 3 is basically the total dependent because they may ask you, about, they, they will need this information to fill out the form. So this is basically what you need to know about W4. Based on this information, you will furnish this to your employer and your employer will compute your federal income tax withholding per pay period. Based on this information, they will determine the amount of taxes they will need to take from you. So this is what page three looks like. Remember, we talked about page three, the worksheet. Remember here, use the multiple worksheet on page three and enter the result in step 4C below for roughly accurate withholding. So what you do is you, is you go to page three, you will fill out page three, and as a result, you will put this number here. You'll put this number in line 4C, the extra withholding. So what, what is what is, what is is page three? What's this worksheet in case you need to complete this worksheet? Again, when do you do this is when you have two jobs or more. So we're gonna assume two jobs, we're gonna assume three jobs. So we're gonna kind of skip this anyway. We did tell you to skip this, skip this part because we're gonna be dealing with two jobs. And, and let's take a look at it. If you have two jobs and you are married, um, and you are married for married filing jointly and your spouse each have one job oh okay let's do this again if you have two jobs or you're married jointly and you and your spouse each have one job so simply put you either have two jobs or your work and your spouse work find the amount of the appropriate table on page four this is page four Using the higher paying jobs row and the lower paying jobs row column, find the value at the intersection of the two household salaries and enter the value on line one, then skip to line three. So just for the sake of illustration, let's let's assume you are making between 80 and 99,000 right here, and your spouse is making between 20 to 29,000. Therefore, this is the amount. It intersect, and we're assuming married filing jointly here because that's what they're asking us. It intersect at $5,010. Let's go to line three. Enter the number of pay period per year for the highest paying job. For example, if that job pays weekly, we're going to assume weekly, we're going to put 52. Divide the annual amount on line one or line 2C, which is line one here. We don't have to worry about 2C. By the number of pay period on line three, enter this amount here and on, on in and step 4C. So simply put, I'm gonna take $5,010 divided by 52. $5,010 divided by 52. I guess my son was using the computer because he used this big calculator. So $100.20. Okay, let me just reduce the calculator size. And this way I know when he's using the calculator again, my son loves the calculator. He's only, Five, five and a half years old, but this is what he likes to play with calculators. Okay. Now, this is what goes online. Again, this is the, because you want to tell your employer about this. So this is what goes online for C, $100.20. This is the extra withholding. Because the other amount is based on, based on step two and step three. But if you want extra withholding, this is how you figure out the extra withholding. Okay. Now, uh, deductions, if you have any deductions here, again, if you want to have any deductions, you will compute this based on your standard deduction or uh, or itemized deduction, and it goes on line 4B. So this is going to reduce your taxes. Line 4B would reduce your taxes. Um, again, let's go through it real quick. And enter an estimated amount of your 2021 itemized deduction. Most people don't itemize. <laughs> if you itemize, most likely you'll have your own CPA doing this. But let's assume it's you, you can itemize for just for the sake of illustration. You are single. You only have itemized of 10,000. Well, the standard deduction is 12,000. 
12,550. It means you're not going to use the itemized deduction. If line 1 is greater than line 2, subtract line 2 from line 1 and enter the results. If line 2 is greater than line 1, enter 0. Line 2 is greater, enter 0. It means you're going to be taking the standard deduction. Enter an estimate of your student loan interest. Deductible IRA contribution, uh, deductible IRA contribution, inserting other adjustments. Simply put, we're going to assume you don't have any. Add lines three and four, it's zero. So we're going to assume you have no extra deduction for the sake of simplicity. So simply put, on um, 4B, you have zero. But I just showed you if you have any additional deduction, any additional deduction like student interest loan, deductible IRA, your employer will take that into account when they take the money out of your paycheck. So this W-4 is more involved than the old W-4. The old W-4, they did not really look at your student loans, interest, and deductible IRA, and other adjustments, They, you know, which is part of your uh, Part 2 Schedule 1 of uh, Form 1040. This, this one, it does. Now, again, we know what it is because we need to use this information. Now your employer, now, here we go, now your employer, now your employer will have several methods in computing your tax withholding and those are the methods we're going to be actually looking at method one percentage method table for automated payroll uh, system we'll look at briefly the wage bracket and we'll simplify this again this is from the employer perspective we'll also look at four percentage method table for manual manual payroll system with form w4 uh, from 2020 or later, which is the new form. Again, but there are other forms, but this is what we're going to be using for the sake of illustration. So for the sake of illustration, we're going to be using the first method, which is the percentage method table for automated payroll system. Now, in my class, most likely we'll be using this method. Unless you are told to use the other methods, you will use the other method. For the, for, for the sake of illustration, let's compute one, fill out one, just to see how this all works. Uh, step one, this is again from the employer perspective. This is we're, he, here we are dealing from the employer perspective. Enter the amount, enter the employee's total taxable wages for this payroll. Well, we're going to assume it's a thousand dollar for the sake of illustration. Enter the number of pay period you have per year. So we're going to assume it's weekly, fifty two. Multiply the amount on line one, a, by the number of line line one b, which is. 1,000 divided by 52 equal to 52,000. This is your year. Basically, this is your yearly salary. Um, if the employee has submitted a form W-4 for 2020 or later, figure the adjusted annual wage amount. So we have to figure out something called the adjusted annual wage amount. This is what they try to figure out. Enter the, enter the amount from step 4A of the employer W-4. Let's go back to step 4A. And 4A, we're going to assume you don't have anything for 4A. Okay, just I don't want to show you where it's coming from. This is just so you know where it's coming from. Now, if they refer to step 4A, I'm not going to go back every time, but you know where to find it. Zero. Add line, add line 1C and 1D. 1C and 1D, well, it's going to keep us at 52,000. Enter the amount from step 4B of the employee form W4. These are their deductions. You have no deductions. We're going to have assume zero. If the box in step two of form w4 is checked enter zero if the box is not checked enter 12,900 if the if the taxpayer is married filing jointly or 8,600 otherwise so we're not going to assume it's a checked we're going to enter we're going to enter 8,600 here 8,600 and this amount is given to you it might change from year to year 1h add lines 1f and 1h 1F one is 0, 1H one is 8,600, it's 8,600, 8,600. Subtract line 1H from line 1E, one 1H e. one and 1E, one e. so 52,000 minus 8,600, that's going to give us 43,400. You know, my pen is very big, that's why I can't write otherwise. Um, so this is the adjusted annual wage amount. This is how you compute the adjusted, the adjusted annual wage amount. If the employee has not submitted a W-4, we're not going to use this because we submitted, figure the adjusted annual wage as follow. So there's another way if the employee did not, which is it will take more money, but we're not going to do this. Now let's go to look at the tentative withholding amount. Now we need to find out how much they're going to take from this individual. 2A, enter the employee annual adjusted amount, which is right here, 43,400. 
Um, find the row in the appropriate annual percentage table in which the amount on line 2A is at least the amount in column A, but less than the amount in column B, then enter the amount. Okay, so now we're going to go to this table here. Okay, percentage method table for automated payroll system. This is what we are using. Make sure you are using the right table. Students, you know, they use the wrong table and they don't get the, the right amount. And they have A, B, a, column A, column B, column C, column D, and column E. And we are dealing with person who is married filing jointly. Okay, so you have to make sure you are using the right table. You are using the right table. And the first thing they want us to do is uh, find the column B. So we're looking in column B here. And the amount is 43,400. And we're going to assume this individual is single. So we're using single. 43,400 falls right here in column, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to assume this individual is single, yeah, single, single, so um, for single individual, let's see, um, for single individual, actually 43,400 falls between 13,675 and 43,925, so we're going to we're going to input the number f um, in column B uh, to B. Let's see. Find the row on line 2A is at least the amount. Okay, so we are working with this one. Let me just make, um, let me highlight it in yellow. Okay. This one, we're dealing with this line here. Okay. So line 2B. Uh, on line 2B, enter the amount from column A of that row, okay, which is column A, 13,675. 13,675. It's this number here, 13,675. Uh, line 2C, enter the column from line uh, column C. Column C is 987.50. Again, all what I'm doing is I'm taking the numbers, 987.50. Enter the percentage from column D. Percentage, it's 12%. Uh, enter the percentage of column. Subtract line 2A, 2B from 2A. If we take 43,400 minus 13,650, it's going to give us 29,725. 29,725. Multiply the amount by line 2D. That's going to give us 3,000, 3,567. Add line 2C and 2F. 2C is 987.750 and 2F, 3,567. That's going to give us $4,554.50. Now divide the amount on line 2G, 2G by the number of periods. If we take this amount, number of periods, 52, it's going to come up to $87.59. Okay, we're going to assume there is no credit. We're going to assume there is no extra withholding for C. Therefore, we'll take $87.59. This amount is to be withheld from the employee wages for this pay period. Therefore, if you are getting paid $1,000, they're going to take based on the information given. We are dealing with single individual weekly no depend no dependent uh no dependent uh no extra withholding therefore we're going to take 87 dollars and 50 cent now another way to do this is to use the wage bracket method table or we're going to simplify this make sure you are using at the right table weekly and under weekly uh here we're going to feed if the adjusted wages amount the adjusted wages amount we assume it's a thousand there's no adjustments for this individual so we're dealing with this one here again weekly a thousand and the individual is uh the individual is married filing jointly therefore the withholding will be 88 dollars the withholding will be i'm sorry uh single we're dealing with a single individual not married, so let's go. Oh, let me highlight it again. Because this example is single, not married individual. Single standard withholding. They have no extra withholding. Therefore, it is 
$88. They have no standard withholding and they did not check the withholding box. What happened if they check the withholding box? If they check the withholding box, notice it goes to 156. And hopefully you see that's almost double. Why? It means this individual has two jobs, has two jobs, 80, well, it, as a result, and they have similar salaries, therefore we'll take more money. But we're not assuming this, we're assuming standard withholding. Again, this is a simplified method for the wage bracket, because here they're asking us about the adjusted wage amount. Sometimes you have to compute the adjusted wage amount. We're gonna assume they have no adjustments here. You know, they're making a thousand, we're not making any adjustments for them, okay? Now let's use the percentage method table for the manual payroll system. Okay, first uh, we're just gonna work with an example, somebody who's married filing jointly, they'll get $5,000 per pay period, 24 periods, they have two dependent, which is step three, $4,000, and they want extra withholding of $50 from for, form, uh, from form W4, line 4C. Okay, so first enter the employee total taxable wages for this payroll period, we said it's 5,000. Enter the number of pay period, they're gonna be paid 24 times a year, Line 1C, enter the amount from step 4A, we don't have anything. Divide 1C by 1B, there's nothing in 1C, therefore there's there's nothing here, nothing here. Line 1E, uh, 1 e, add line 1A and 1D, 1A and 1D, it's still at 5,000. Uh, enter the amount from, um, 1E is above, the 5,000 is here. Enter the amount from step 4B. We don't have anything. Divide 1F by line 1B. There's nothing. Subtract line 1G. There's nothing line 1G. From line 1E, if the amount is zero, is if the amount less than zero, it's not less than zero. The adjusted wages are 5,000. So this, these are the adjusted wages. Now figure the tentative withholding amount. Now we're gonna go to the table. And we are dealing with an individual that's married filing jointly semi-monthly which is 24 periods 24 periods and the amount of the and the amount of the adjusted wages is between uh it's five thousand five thousand goes right here between four thousand three hundred seventy seven and eight thousand one hundred and sixty therefore the first thing we put the amount from column a which is four thousand three hundred and seventy seven enter the amount from column c three hundred eighty four dollars and eighty two cent three eighty four twenty now enter the percentage from column d this is there in the twenty two percent uh subtract line two a from line one h two a from line one h and that's gonna five thousand minus four thousand three hundred uh and seventy seven and it's going to six. It's going to be six hundred and twenty-three. Now uh, multiply the amount on line two D six six twenty-three by two C by by uh, twenty-two percent. That's going to give us one hundred, approximately one hundred and thirty-seven dollars. And add line two B and two E two B and two E. That's going to give us five hundred twenty-one dollars and eighty-eight cents. This is the tentative withholding. Um, let's see if they have any extra credit. Enter the amount from step three of the employee's W-4. We said on step three, they have $4,000 in withholding. And notice that what's gonna happen as a result, they're gonna take less money from their paycheck. Initially, we thought it's gonna be 521.88. Now divide the amount line 3A by the number of pay period. The number of pay period is 24. That's gonna give us 166.67. Subtract line 3B from line 2F, 3B from 2F, and that's gonna give us $355.21. And they want extra withholding for $50. Then if we take 355.21, which is the tentative withholding, the new tentative withholding, plus the $50 that they want extra, they're gonna withhold from their paycheck $405.21. And this is basically, you have to do this computation in the homework. So that's why I went through these forms, just to give you an idea, how does it work? How does it work? Um, again, read the line and follow the, the, follow the instruction. The first thing you wanna make sure is, if you're using this method, percentage method table for manual payroll processing, you are using percentage method table for manual processing. This is one problem students 
phase. The other one is you're dealing with it monthly, weekly. Make sure you are using the right pay period. And sometimes here's what happened. Some students, they use 2021 while they're supposed to, if I'm asking them for year 2020, they're using 2021 tables because, because they go to the IRS website and they download the table and the IRS table is 2021. The homework is for 2020. I saw this several times. So just make sure you are aware of these things. At the end of this recording, if you're an accounting student or CPA candidate, I'm going to invite you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I can help you pass the CPA exam. Study hard. Good luck and stay safe.